Hey guys, Tommy with Off Grid Nation. Glad to see you guys again. I know it's been a while since I've done a video, but I got a special guest with me today. We have Eric Gaddy, and Eric Gaddy and I have a backstory that I think we should clue you into, but also very interesting. His background is in finance, amongst other things, and he's a new author, recently wrote the book, Retire Early, What Are You Waiting For? So we wanted to talk about that, but I think he's got one of the most interesting stories out there, and it really does parallel, um, in some respects, my story, and I know a lot of your stories out there as well. But I think it's real interesting where you came from, where you went, but if it's all right, Eric, I'd like to talk a little bit about how we connected earlier on in this story. Welcome to the program. Oh, great to be here. Thank you. <laughs> all right, we appreciate it. So Eric and I worked together uh, a million years ago at a bank, and we did the same thing. We were both in the financial consultant business, we were financial advisors, and he left a little earlier than I did, but we both ended up in the same place, and then we ended up in the same place again. Yes. So um, you ended up getting out of the banking system, and you went independent how many years ago? Uh, about eight years ago. I started my own firm in 2010. I retired or semi-retired in, in uh, two years ago, and I got, a, I got an interesting phone call from Eric. Actually, it was a text message. I was coming back from a trip, and it said, hey, are, are you the guy on YouTube? <laughs> and of course, you, you know, I, I want to retain some of uh, some cloak and dagger secrecy. So I was like, ah, uh, yeah, I wasn't sure how to respond. He was the first person that ever outed me other than my neighbor. And I was like, yeah, man, that's me. And so I said, how'd you come across my channel? And you were like, oh, I was sitting on my porch having my Saturday morning cigar, and I, I was going through off-grid uh, channels, and I remember sitting there and seeing the video, and I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> I know that guy. Yeah, hey, wait a minute. So I text you right afterwards, and, and yeah, it was like you were the first person to find me. Yeah, <laughs> so, so, you know, it was one of those things, you know how so many of us, we like to uh, have have our autonomy and we like to have uh, our anonymity and so Eric was asking me questions about this but I found that you were you were interested in changing your lifestyle completely so knowing the background you came for you worked in the business for what 24 years 24 years I didn't realize it was that yeah. long so you had a long like time 50. <laughs> I felt like 50 <laughs> lifetimes so I mean, you had a long lifetime uh, in that business with a certain mindset we all went to the same school so to speak and how did you get to the point where you're like you know what i want something totally different well it's a little bit of a, a longer story uh, let me give you some background first uh, i grew up in a mortuary that was the family business yeah it was uh, I, the, my mom eventually sold it it was 106 years in our family but you know by the time i was eight years old i was moving bodies with her you know, nothing strange about nothing that. Nothing strange about that. I, I don't look back and think of that as odd at all. But the funny thing is, is that I didn't know any different at that point in time. But what I did know that, you know, I, I would see these kids that were younger than me, that were older than me, and their teenagers passing away. I was seeing 20 and 30 year olds passing away, and it, and it really struck home. Now, you know, you kind of get used to it when you're in it, but when you step away from it and you get a little older, you're like, wow, that's pretty amazing. And, and so the two things that I took with me when I left for college was really, number one, life is short. Mm -hmm. And that's an easy phrase for people to kind of roll off their tongue these days. Hey, man, life's short. But I saw it. And the other thing was, I know my time is running out. You know, tomorrow is not guaranteed. And so as I progressed on in my career, got married, had children, financial advising, I, I can look back and kind of see some mini awakenings. But it was one of those that I might start kind of waking up that I might want to do something different might want to change my life, but I would just fall back into that rinse and repeat lifestyle, right. which is this doing the same thing every day, every week, every hey, month. Man, you're not digging ditches. It pays pretty good. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it was. So, you know, really, I didn't wake up until my sister uh, died about four years ago. She was 51 years old, breast and brain cancer. Jeez. And then somebody we mutually know, my, my old business partner died at 47 of colon cancer. And so at that point, I remember soon after that, I went to a, a, a financial advisor conference and I'm looking around the room and I'm seeing all these older advisors, 65, 70, 75 years old, and I'm like, it just struck me. It's like, oh no. I, mean, I, I think I thought to myself, oh hell no, I'm not going to do this right. anymore. So on the way home, I told my girlfriend, I was like, listen, I'm going to write a book. I'm going to get out. And uh, I think her response was, Oh, that's great. Uh, what do you want to do for dinner? And so, <laughs> right, you had this life-changing yeah. epiphany, and she's yeah. like, hey, do you want to order a pizza? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so literally, about a month later, I started writing the book. So um, it, was, it was a series of things that woke me up, but it was always kind of 
that mortuary that was already growing up that way had implanted in me, you know, the seeds of life is short and, and get on with life. So you and I got together, I don't know, two years ago now? It's, it's been a while, at least yeah. a year ago. Yeah, probably, yeah. And, and we got together and we had lunch and you said, hey, I want to pick your brain on some of the things that you did about selling your business. And when we sat down, I was blown away by what was going on in your head for two reasons. Number one, because it's a lot of the same thoughts I was having at the time, ha having previous to that point of us meeting, and I've had since. But also I was blown away by the fact that you, like me, were just, you, you were ready to jump out of the plane almost without a parachute. Right. I was like, you know what, I'm done. Once, once you made that decision in your head, it's real tough getting up and going to work and doing the same thing day after day. It very much is. And, and you know, that was something that it was just a switch in my brain. And I knew I was done. It, kind of funny story, when I started writing the book, I, I told my girlfriend, who's also an advisor, that I had a five-year plan. Two months later, <laughs> it went to a two-year plan. And then one month later, when I finished the book, it was a zero-year plan. It was right. time to go. Yep. Um, so that's when I put in motion to sell to my practice and, and got it sold. I found myself going from an eight-hour day to a four-hour day to a two-hour day. I don't yeah. even want to get up and go for two hours anymore. It was yeah. done. You know, I look back on my career, probably like you do as well, I accomplished everything I wanted to accomplish. And it was on to a new challenge. It was time to try something completely different. So. For you, it was it was kind of a looking out and seeing your own mortality and saying, you know what? Yeah. I mean, for me, it was 40 years old. When I hit 40, it was like, gosh, you know what? Best case scenario, probably half of my life is over right. and how fast it went. Yeah. And, you know, you fast forward 20 years and that's not a long time. And you know what? At this age, you start to realize that. And you go, do I really want to be doing this for the next 20 years? And these might be the next healthiest 20 years that I'm ever going to experience. Absolutely. And so... I started thinking about my life and what I was going to do differently. What I found interesting about your story, at least initially, and I want to find out because we haven't talked since, I want to find out how much it's changed, if any. You said, you know, I'm considering getting a small, like, tiny house cabin mm -hmm. on some property as my home base, yeah. and then getting an RV and just traveling, meeting yeah. people, going different places. What's new, if anything? Well, I mean, I think that the, the theme of that story still stays the same. I mean, the thought is, is to get a home base somewhere and so that home base may be here and uh, up from Asheville so right. it might be around the Asheville area it might be um, somewhere else it might be in Colorado it might be in Idaho uh, you know I have a pull towards off-grid living and so you know around here it's a little bit more difficult to go off-grid yeah not impossible but the thought is have a more mobile lifestyle for a while travel around in the RV we also, what has probably come into that plan is we've looked at the idea of maybe moving to Costa Rica or Panama or Ecuador or somewhere like that. It's so funny that you say that. And so, uh, yeah. Well, I, I literally, uh, I just came back from a trip from Italy, and in the back of my mind, I thought, geez, you know what? It was really neat over there. Yeah. And then I started thinking, you know, why am I so tied to this country, mm -hmm. this geographic location? And almost simultaneously in my YouTube feed came all these videos about retiring in Mexico yep. and I started looking into that I'm like wow you can live like a king in many places down there for a thousand dollars a month thousand fifteen hundred dollars a month yeah absolutely and there's some really emerging places down there a lot of times um, the big question I get every day is about health insurance and retiring early and and what a lot of people don't realize because one of the countries I was looking at is Colombia uh, Medellin Colombia Pablo Escobar country. Yeah, exactly. Oh, he's gone. They don't want to talk about that anymore. But it's really an up-and-coming, emerging it, city. I mean, it is booming, with, especially with expats. But it's one of those that you would be surprised that on the U.S., on the health, or the global, I guess, um, health index, the United States is ranked 37th. Columbia is ranked like 26 or 27th. So they've got an even higher rated health care system than the United States. Now, it's just crazy, and you can get into Columbia and $100 a month, $200 a month no pay for health care. That's amazing. And so that's what I'm looking at, and you know, I did a lot of research with the book because we talked about that, but it's just amazing how much further your money can go, the quality of health care, not in every country, some of them aren't great, but it's, it's some, thinking outside the box and coming yeah. up with ideas and how to well, that, that segues very nicely into what I want to talk about next, but we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back in just a minute. Stick around. This is interesting stuff. All right, welcome back. We are here with Eric Gaddy. He is the new author for Retire Early. What are you waiting for? And we have been talking about kind of his epiphany and how he came to the point of where, where he is now. Um, one of the things I found interesting, because a lot of people talk about 
hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to start and go in a totally different direction. But it's rare to find somebody that actually did it. And what clued me into you were the real deal and you were going to actually do it, other than the fact that I knew you before and I knew that you were a top performer, uh, was the fact that when I signed up for your email list, every single week I started getting emails with blog posts. And they were interesting. Even though I'm from the business, I'm like, oh, this is interesting. Because it's coming from a perspective that I'm very interested in now. It wasn't all about, here's how you get your nest egg. It was talking more about philosophy and your changing philosophy. So I, every week I started getting an email from you with a different blog post that blew me away, but let's talk about your philosophy now and going forward. Well, my definition of retiring early is a bit different than the true definition of retirement. Um, you, you mean know, society's definition society's of retirement? Society's definition Work of until you're 65 and if there's anything there, maybe you can exactly. live off of Social Security? You know, my, my whole definition is, is that you leave your corporate job or your career uh, you seize your freedom, you take control of your life, and you do what you want, when you want, how you want, from where you want. Amen. Basically, you are in control, and that you may still work. You know, it, it might be something that you go get a part-time job, or you turn a hobby into something that's income-producing. But you're, you're focusing on the things that you enjoy doing, and you're happy. And so, through this whole process, has been a real learning experience for me, whether it's email, or you know, writing a blog, or you know, we're looking at online courses, and we're looking at doing a YouTube channel, and we're looking at doing all these different projects. Now, they don't take me a whole lot of time, so people will say, well, you're not really retired if you're doing all that. Well, writing a blog takes me 30 minutes a week. So, But all this stuff is really new to me because I quit paying attention to technology about 20 years ago. <laughs> I got busy. I mean, I was having a family, and I was, I was going to work. So now it's time for me to learn some different skills. And it's been a, an absolute blast to figure out how somebody can take a blog and turn it into something that produces income or, right. or a YouTube channel and, and all of that. So a lot of it for me, this transition has been learning and just experiencing all these different things. Um, so I wouldn't say that necessarily I'm, there's not been one point that I'd say, you know, I'm bored. I've always had some some kind of project to go on. And no, and it's clear to me from your writings that you're actually enjoying what you're doing. Now. Absolutely. And, and there's something to be said for real freedom. And I think society has taught us, we were talking about this earlier, society has taught us that you have to uh, do things in a certain order and in a certain way to be part of society and be happy. But through my education, through YouTube, uh, and YouTube has been really integral in, in trying to figure out, because now I can see things from different people. It's not just the corporate... Uh, media that gives me this one process of what people look like. I'm seeing, I'm seeing there are choices out there. We don't have to do it this way. We can do anything we want to attain real, uh, to, to attain real freedom and happiness. And it sounds like your idea of real freedom and happiness is uh, not getting up and, and going to a, a job that, that really is killing us in some way, shape, or form every right. single day. That that stress really takes away from our life. But um, in, in the freedom is going new places and doing new things and, and, and doing it with a different mindset. Yeah, and I harken back to uh, my last kind of position in the financial advising world was I had my own firm, but I truly was not free. I still had accountability and I still had compliance that was censoring what I had to say. And so this has been the first time really in my life that I can truly say I'm free. I'm uncensored. I go and say anything I want to. I can do what I want. And, you know, on the flip side of growing up in a mortuary, I grew up on a farm. Oh, did you? I mean, yeah, we had uh, we had quarter horses, and I was the uh, the stable boy, so I didn't ride. I was just out there cleaning the stalls, and we we grew crops. But you know, I had this kind of renegade mindset. So as the business of financial advising started changing, and they started telling us kind of positioning us to what to say and what to do, I'm the one that bucks the system. I, I do not like to be told what the what to do. So I, I just thought it was best to kind of mosey on and go do something else. Now, you and I definitely shared that. I never seemed to fit real well in the corporate environment. I always did well, but I never fit well. Right. Um, and, and I thought, like like you thought, well, I'll do it my own thing. And it felt great at first because you did have more freedom, but you realized that you still were under the thumb of the machine. Well, I mean, when you go out and do your own thing and you're not in the masses of what everybody else is doing, even though your thing may be just brilliant and profiting big time, Corporate wants you back in line. Right. It's like they don't want you out here testing something new right. or doing something different. So I, I think, again, that my time had kind of come to an end with the 
financial advising, I accomplished everything, and it was time for me to uh, to enjoy my complete freedom. Well, but that's the true rub here: is that you're not out of the business. You're out of that business, but right. you're not out of the business. And now, you know, talking about your book, maybe kind of the Reader's Digest version, because we want people to check this out, guys. And by the way, I'm going to leave a link in the description. You can get this on Amazon. It's coming out on the 6th of September. So, so. at the time that we're recording this interview, it's September 3rd. I already ordered my advanced copy. Uh, so I'm going to be one of the first people to get it. But Eric brought this so we can show it to the camera. Yeah. Um, guys, check out check out the book. I think it's going to be well worth the read because what you're talking about here is you're giving really a step by step on how to do this. Right. Because yes. most of us have no clue. Like I get that question all the time. How did you do this? And they think that you know I made a billion dollars. I made a good income, but I didn't make a billion dollars. Right. So how do you retire at 40 or 45 or 50? And your blog posts are awesome, and I know a lot of that info is going to be in the book. But talk about kind of how the book is set up and what people can expect to learn from it. Yeah, and I think that's the big thing. You touched on something there for a second. You know, when they hear you've retired at 44 or 48 or 50, most comments is you must have inherited a bunch of money. Right. No. You must have sold your business for millions. No. You must have. Are you sick? Are you okay? It's like, <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. So, yeah, I mean, with this process, uh, you know, just most people aren't used to hearing that somebody's retired that early. Most people are thinking, again, as society pushes us, is to retire at 65. So what I created here, I wanted to find four different financial items that you have to have in place in order to retire at any age. And, it, and I wanted to set it up to where it didn't have to be age-based. So you don't have to be 60 or 65. You could be 45. And so... I started coming up with the process, okay, you're going to need to get your debt in order, you're going to need to get your income in order, you're going to need to get your assets in order, and you're going to need to get your lifestyle, which is basically your monthly expenses in order. And so, I, you know, when you do an acronym of those four things, it comes up to, luckily, dial. The dial into early retirement process is if you get your debt, your income, your assets, and your lifestyle in order, mm -hmm. you can retire at any age. And so the ideal dial, what should it look like, is obviously very little debt or no debt. Um, some debt's not tragic as long as the other parts of your dial work. Right. Income, you know, ideally you want multiple streams of income. That could be from a pension, it could be from real estate, it could be from investment accounts, it could be owner financing your business. Um, assets, you want assets to do three things for you. You want assets to create income to give yourself an emergency fund. Because whether you retire early and you're traveling the world or you're retiring early and staying at home, things are gonna happen unexpectedly. Okay. So you need an emergency fund. And the third thing is, is that you just need assets. You need money for future expenses. Mm -hmm. And the fourth thing is, is lifestyle, is a lifestyle that hopefully is based in frugality and based in um, living well within your means. Um, you know, I always joke around that if you need the big house, in the golf community with the country club and a brand new car every two years and you've got to have all this high society uh, lifestyle then you better have extravagant assets and income right. to cover right. or your chances of retiring early are very slim. Sure and so so it comes down to choices and one of the right. things you know we were talking about that aha moment and I know a lot of you guys watching you've either had that moment and that's why you're watching um, or you are going to have that moment. Heck, maybe watching this, you're going to have that moment. But for me, I was watching a YouTube video. It was a TED Talk. And I saw this minimalist. And there were these two guys on there. And they talked about something. And the thing that stuck with me four or five years later, I, I, I'll never forget it, is um, they said, you know what? We woke up one day and we realized that we're going to jobs every day that we hate to earn money, to buy things that we don't need, to impress people that we don't know and don't care about. Right. And I was like, wait a second, that's me. I had the McMansion, the nice cars, and all these things, and I said, geez, is any of this stuff really making me happy? I know that I thought that it was going to make me happy, but I just realized that there was something missing. Right. And so that, that's what really started me down this road. And so what you're telling people is, if you want to live this extravagant lifestyles of the rich and famous, then either you're going to have to have a boatload of money, a big inheritance, or you're going to have to continue working, or you can modify your lifestyle. Yeah, I mean, I, I think when you look at it, freedom has its sacrifices. So if you said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work till I'm 65, you will be much more financially stable. But you're not going to have a lot of freedom left because typically from 
65 to 75 is going to be your freedom range because at 75 most people start slowing down. They're not going to travel as much. And, and these are averages. Like, yeah. like you said, a lot of these people that you saw in the mortuary, some of your friends, I've had friends and family pass away, we may never see 65 or 75. Oh, yeah. no, that's not. the other tragedy is that you, know, you might be working and then not have any more days left. Uh, that, that's exactly right. So, I mean, you could be financially stable at 65 and retire, but you're not going to have a tremendous amount of income. Now, if you retire at 50, you're going to have a lot of freedom, but you may not be as financially stable. You may have to find a part-time job, or you may have to find creative ways to get income coming in. But, you know, you're either choosing money or you're choosing freedom. And for me, my decision was freedom. In your uh, emails that you sent out every single week, you actually talked about how you, how you can retire at thirty thousand, and twenty thousand, and ten thousand. And ten thousand blew me away. It was what ramen noodles every single night. <laughs> no, not really. It was ten thousand was more or less to build out a cargo trailer because I had the vehicle. That was part of the whole deal. Is I was keeping my vehicle to build out a cargo trailer that was fully functional as a RV, mm -hmm. which is becoming more and more popular, and then taken off and I think I said I was going to uh, do tax returns in Arizona from January to April at H&R Block or somewhere and then I was going to be a camp host throughout the summer and then I was going to go pick sugar beets up in uh, Minneapolis um, for about three weeks and then I was going to go work at the Amazon distribution center because uh, they always hire um, Amazon loves RVers. They Did come you? in for two or three months at the end really? of the year for the holidays for the big rush and they provide like an RV park and they provide all this stuff and and so you know my part of my early retirement at ten thousand dollars that's all I had in a vehicle was to work my way around the country mm -hmm. and just enjoy time and then the next year if I didn't need as much money I didn't have to work all those jobs then I could take one of those jobs off and have two or three months of freedom right. and as I kept building I could take more time off See it was a real world lifestyle thought exercise that, that I got from all these yeah. things as I, as I was reading through it. But these are things that your parents will never tell you about. Like, hey, why don't you not work but travel the country and you can work as a host at a campsite. And you, this isn't the typical um, societal driven thought process when it comes to how you're supposed yeah. to live your life. This is completely different. And, and you're right, this is becoming more popular. There's more and more people looking for that missing thing that they right. are, are so in desperately in need of in life. And that's what I loved about as I'm reading this. I'm like, wow, he's not just my buddy. I don't just know him from a former life. He, he and I are kind of swimming in the same thought pond, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, I mean, there was not one time in my 24-year career where a sales manager or an investment firm came to me and said, let's help get people retired early. It was always, let's get them to 65. So if you step back a little bit, I, I've said, you know, the government doesn't want you retiring early because they want you paying into Social Security, paying taxes and all this. And, and you've been slaved, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You've got to produce. And then the, uh, the, the financial world doesn't necessarily want you retiring early because they want you to accumulate as much assets as you they can. They don't want you to withdraw because they only make money when the money's in there. Right, in right. The so the more you work, the right. more you have, the more you invest, the more the profits. Right. So it's, it's one of those that you're kind of swimming up upstream a little bit when you're talking about retiring early because it's not something that is super encouraged but you know with the book what I want to try to accomplish is is wake some people up I mean yeah. there's a lot of people that are just walking around in a slumber and kind of like a zombie they're just doing the same thing every day I did that for years and years and years until something got me my attention and unfortunately that was a family member and a, a friend dying so you know it's about you know just living your life having a great time and and just enjoying your freedom while you've got it. And you know what? We've all experienced negative things, family members, friends passing away. Uh, it's a horrible thing, but the fact that you're able to take something super positive from that experience mm -hmm. and change your lifestyle, and then you know, write a book about it and, right. and affect change, and I'm sure this is going to impact thousands of people as this thing gets out. I know you're doing a lot of press right now, and I appreciate you coming by our little channel and checking oh, this out. This is great. And, uh, but I know this is going to have a big impact, and I know you're not the only person doing this or thinking about this. This country in particular, it seems like um, people in our society have been so trained on, on a certain way of doing it, and we're realizing that we don't have to do it that way. So as you're taking us through these real life thought exercises, lifestyle exercises, it's different than the corporate mantra that I hear from uh, Dave Ramsey. And I listen to the show, and I like Dave Ramsey. He talks about a lot of good things, but um, it's not 
the lifestyle changed so much. It's, you know, get debt free, accumulate assets, and then you can have more freedom down the road. I like the fact that you're telling us about that, but you're also saying, hey, we can cut the cord now, pull the parachute now. Right. Here's how I'd do it if I had to do it on this. And you took us through those exercises. Um, I don't know that I'm going to be a sugar beet farmer anytime soon, <laughs> but the point is you don't have to be a sugar beet you farmer. Don't. You know, and that's the funny thing is, is that I, 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 I don't know when I'll get around to it, but I've got a list of 125 different jobs that you could take your mobile lifestyle on the road and work all across the country, make a good income and have your freedom. And, you know, depending on how much income you need would depend on how much you would be working. But there is a tremendous amount of opportunity out there when people start thinking differently. I'm going to do this differently. Yeah, I mean, one of the things I try to do to wake people up is I, I, I tell people in the book to write their own obituary. Oof, you know? Whoa. It's like, <laughs> well, that'll be right there. Right, bam. And so, uh, and, and, and so, you know, at the end of the day, you know, the money that we're making, there's a lot of people that chase money. I mean, there is no benefit of being the richest man in the graveyard. No. I mean, you can't take it with you. What is your book going to help us figure out, retiring early, uh, lifestyle changes, what is this going to do for the reader when they get it in their hands? Well, I think the, I mean, when you look at the first half of the book, or the first section of the book, it's the how-to portion. Mm -hmm. And that gets in line the financials. You know, what do I have to get in line to be able to retire at any age? So that's dialing in your early retirement. The second part of the book, we talk about lifestyles. What are people doing? So I think this plants and educates some people on maybe some ways they hadn't even thought about. Sugar beet farmer. Yeah, I talk about <laughs> off-grid living in there. I talk about tiny houses. I talk about, you know, just simplifying in place. Mm -hmm. um, we talk about expats and mobile lifestyles. And, you know, you, you've just got people that are on you know, their own path to kind of waking up. And some people will never. Some people will just go through what society pushes them to, retire at 65, and live out the rest of their life. But I think, to your point, more and more people are starting to get it. They're starting to wake up and they're starting to say, I, I've got some options here. I don't have to work another 10 years. I could, I could potentially uh, retire now. Uh, my lifestyle may look different. And you've got to be willing to, to have that trade-off, make sure. some sacrifices. But at the end of the day, what's more important to you, freedom or money? And just getting back, I want to remind people that when he says retire, it doesn't mean you stop working. I mean, I'm a young guy, he's a young guy. It doesn't mean we want to be useless, sit on the couch and watch soap operas all day. It means quitting your corporate job and doing something you love to do, attaining some real freedom. So we do still need income, regardless of whether you're 45 or 65 or 85. You do still need to generate income. How you do that is going to differ on the individual's basis. Yeah, I mean, I mean you look at, I'll give you an example, Brett Favre. What did he say when he left the NFL? I retired. I may be back for a fifth time, but I retire. I, this time it's for real. I'm retired from the NFL. Now what does he do? He's on every other sports channel on Saturdays on his Wrangler commercial, selling right. Wranglers. And he's out doing other things, making money. Did he retire to the recliner? No. He, he, he retired to freedom. He doesn't have to go to training camp. He doesn't have to play any games, but he retired to freedom. So he could stick any player in there, any sport that, athlete into that scenario. But there's no person that I've interviewed that I've talked to that retired early, and I'm talking about 55 and younger, that didn't do something to create an income stream or stay active. Because as we all know, retiring is about staying mentally and physically active. Because if you just retire to the recliner, you're going to rot, rot away. I mean, it's and we've seen that. I mean, yeah. it, not just in our own personal lives, but in our professional lives. We've seen people that just kind of melted away and they age in dog years because they're not staying active. Right. They're, not, they're not physically active. They're not mentally active. So I, I would imagine hobbies has something to do with this whole thing when you're talking about lifestyle, yeah. right? I mean, even if you're living off-grid and you're out in the woods, you need to have some stuff that, that keeps you young and keeps you fun. Absolutely. Whether it's a hobby or, for a lot of people, it's I haven't had time to learn this skill. I want to learn more, and now that I'm going to retire, I'm going to be able to spend the time, whether it's going back to community college and learning a, a, a technical skill or a, a, you know, creative writing or whatever, maybe volunteering. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of different ways, especially online, there's so many different ways that you can monetize things, that you can literally take a hobby and turn it into something that produces income. In the book, I joked about, you know, let's say you're a cat lover. And you love cats. And so you could maybe write a cat blog and you could do cat videos. Who doesn't like little cute 
cat videos. Yeah, and then you, maybe you come out with a little catnip that says it's the crazy cat lady catnip, <laughs> and you sell that. And there's all the you could monetize all of that, and make money in something that you love. And so that's part of the, the education that I want to help people is is that retiring early doesn't mean no more work. It just means maybe taking you know what are the top three things that really interest you that you find just or your passion and you love passion, right? and then you just go out there and you create a way to monetize mm -hmm. what you love to do because you know like they always say if you find something that you love to do you never work a day in your life right on so that's the key okay so for as little as ten dollars for as much as eighteen dollars in the cost of a workbook down the road if you want it you can actually start getting to work on buying your freedom and that's how little it's going to cost you to get started. I talked to you a little bit about my debt program because one of the things that I'm interested in doing is helping people become debt free and that's the first thing in your dial system that yep. you were talking about is get your debt under management. You have to, you really have to start peering down on, on what matters to you and then how to attack that debt because to me debt is slavery. And once you get that part figured out it's much easier to see the rest of the landscape in your income, assets right. and lifestyle. Um, so, so the debt is key. I hope to be able to work with you on that aspect because I think there's a lot of synergies that we can attack together to really help people figure this out. It's not, it's not a big mystery once you sit down and start to figure it out, but it does, like so many other things, you do need some guidance. Well, that it changes kind of a, you, you got to have a change of mindset as well. You mm -hmm. got to open up to the possibilities of other options. Yeah. Because otherwise, you'll just stay on the same track. Yeah. Well, yeah. well in, in, in like we know with Weight Watchers. Uh, Weight Watchers, there's no um, big epiphany there, there's no miracle. It's really, uh, the folks that have been successful with, with a system like Weight Watchers has been because of accountability. Right. So you need a coach, yeah. you need an advisor, you need something that you can go to and ask questions. So with that said, what's on the horizon for you? Because I know, like you said, you had a lot of projects. Are you looking at developing classes and that sort of thing to further help people? I am. I, I'm working on an online course right now. Hopefully the goal is to get that out in the next few weeks. Um, Wow, a lot, busy guy, huh? a lot of this stuff that was brand new. So I'm like, okay, where do we start? How do we do this? Mm -hmm. um, I'm writing the second book, which will just be called Dial Into Retirement, mm -hmm. which this one's more focused on the, the uh, 35 to 60 year old demographic, where the second one will be more 60 and older. Mm -hmm. that. There, there's a lot of different projects, but the, the key is to try to get out the information and educate as many people as possible. Right. I would imagine that it's helping you, as you talk through this, it's helping you develop what your future path is going to be as you go along. It, it, it is. It, it, you know, that was something that even in the last 10 years of my uh, financial advising career is, is that I, I was no longer working for money. Money led me down an empty path. I was working to help people, right. and that's what I always enjoyed doing. So with this, it's to help people, and I and this is a passion of mine to help people, you know, realize and open up their own eyes that there are possibilities out there that they could retire early as well. So I, I enjoy the path of walking people through their own process and giving them ideas on where they could succeed at this. People are going to be able to get this on Amazon, and you want to find the website? should be on bookstores as well, all across the country. Um, the website is www.retireearly365.com. And we're going to put that on the screen here and in the description below. And then we also have Facebook, which is Retire Early 365. And then we have, I could be found on LinkedIn as well. Right, okay. And it doesn't cost anyone to join up on your uh, email list. Right. It doesn't cost anyone to get on your Facebook. I've gotten a lot of information from it. Again, guys, I, I was in the business, same business Eric was in, in the fact that he's presenting things that are making me rethink things that I thought that I knew or I thought about in a certain light. Um, I know that it's going to help you. So even, even if you don't have the $10 to go out and, and buy the Kindle version or the $18 to buy the book, Check him out online, check him out, sign up for his email uh, list so you start getting his blog posts. It, it's, it's, been, it's been a real eye-opener for me, so we appreciate having you on. Is there anything else you want to say before we leave? You know, I would just say seize your freedom and you still have time to rewrite your story. That's it. Carpe diem, guys. Check it out. Retire early. Uh, what are you waiting for? Eric Gaddy.